Ähm. Nein, also hier steht jetzt gerade etwas von das Meeting verlassen. Nein, will ich nicht. Ich Oder ich begrüße mal. Ich okay. begrüße die Leute mal. Genau, und danach vielleicht. Ja. Welcome to the, our evening for Imprisoned Writers Day. Today we will introduce a Kurdish poet, Ilan Samen Chomak who has been in prison in Turkey for 28 years. The European Court of Human Rights in 2007 declared Chomak's persecution unlawful because he confessed under severe torture. So I want to thank the organizers of this event for their collaboration. This event is organized by Penn Center for German-speaking authors abroad the person of Gino Leineweber and myself, and by Letters with Wings from Ireland by Viviana Fiorentina and Silla Toldi, and our Turkish friends Ipek Ötzel and Erkut Tokman. Before uh, we start, um, Leman will do a little song, which is based on a poem of Ilhan. Herzlich willkommen zu unserem Abend zum Imprisoned Writers' Day. Heute werden wir Ihnen den kurdischen Poeten Ilan Sami Çomak vorstellen, der seit 28 Jahren in der Türkei im Gefängnis sitzt. Der Europäische Gerichtshof für Menschenrechte hat 2007 seine Verurteilung als unrechtmäßig erklärt, weil sein Geständnis unter Folter erzwungen wurde. Ich möchte mich bei den verschiedenen Organisatoren dieser Veranstaltung für die Zusammenarbeit bedanken. Diese Veranstaltung wurde vom Penn Zentrum für deutschsprachige Autoren im Ausland, in der Person von Gino Leineweber und mir, sowie von Letters with Wings aus Irland mit Viviana Fiorentino und Silsa Toldi, sowie mit unseren türkischen Freunden Ipek Ötzel und Erkut Tokman organisiert. So, als erstes hören wir mal Le Mann stehen, er wird ein von ihr vertontes Gedicht von Ilhan singen. Danke. Ich 
Thank you very much. This was a wonderful introduction. So, uh, did Ipek arrive, Don? Is Ipek inside the room? No, she's still trying to connect. I just sent her the phone numbers. Good. Then I would say we start with Erkut. Uh, yes, uh, Ipek, uh, Ipek wrote that she's in the uh, waiting room. Can we check if she... Uh, she may be in the waiting room of a different meeting. Something okay. so, something is wrong and, there. Okay, then I I start now. And yeah, I think you should start in English, okay. and then I will do the translation into German. Okay. Okay. Okay. So uh, I will uh, talk about uh, Ilan Samijabak's poetry briefly tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to express my warm welcome to all participants and thank the organizer of this event, making once more possible Ilhan Sami Chomak's voice to be heard and recognized. I knew uh, for the first time Ilhan Sami Chomak uh, by his poetry, in fact, uh, nothing related to political. My ex-publishing house, Komshu, was publishing famous Yasak Mewe poetry series in Istanbul. And I had recently joined the family when my third poetry book published from this series. That time, director of the publishing house gave me as a gift Ilhan Sami Chomak's poetry book. Uh, whenever I met the book that I love, it is my habit that I always want to reach the poet in person or at least to contact to express my appreciation and uh, expressing my ideas or discuss on it. Ilhan was one of them. To this end, when I asked the director how could, could I reach him, I found out that uh, he was in prison 
and our friendship sailed off. Uh, we all uh, describe a miracle uh, as a supernatural phenomenon, mystery, something inexplicable naturally or scientifically, is therefore considered as the work of divine mediation. I always called his accomplishments in prison, therefore, as the miracle. Perhaps he is the first Turkey-born Kurdish imprisoned man who become a poet in prison. Why I say this? Because including from his first book, all his eight books were all written in prison. In Turkey, for many years, writers and poets were kept politically in prison in different periods of their life. Kept inside, some was longer and uh, some was uh, shorter. Uh, some was shorter and those uh, become uh, unfortunately the part of our so-called premature democratization process. Uh, we know uh, well uh, that uh, from imprisoned persons, declarations after they had released from prison, some especially uh, uh, political uh, prisoners always were bound with reading books inside uh, because nothing else to do. So uh, they become wise and intellectual. Therefore, uh, some calls uh, prison in Turkey such as self-learned school. Ilhan, I think one of the best example of this. Although he is limited to receive the books at each visit with six, I, I knew uh, he was very happy to read books, whatever he can reach at them by the hand of Ipek. Uh, Ilhan Sami Tromak's poetry is a human landscape. I always underlined and mentioned many times and kept saying this. He was the soul and the talent of big poet. I want to repeat this once again in front of you too. This big soul is growing and reshaping in him. And when he is out with total freedom and possibilities by knowing today's life and the world, he will adapt, reconstruct and develop his poetry even better in boom. When we look through Ilhan's poetry, Mainly, we can see some common characteristics throughout all his books. His great respect to humanity and being human, one of the center subjects of his poetry that rises naturally from his being, uh, but widened his senses via language possibilities with utmost sincerity, magnanimity, and humanism. For this respect, we can compare him with Nazim Hikmet. He was learned his, this heritage from Anatolia in his region and around. It is tradition as well as from his family, grandfather, mother, father, uncle, sisters, and brothers. We can also observe this family roots pursuing narratively its own story in his poetry. This becomes sometimes from love of family turned into love of mother than love of woman than long lasted desire of the poet in him as to love and to be loved finds its reflection with enriched images and objects from real life once he lived before imprisoned. Such uh, as a rose in one of the repeated imagery in his poetry matched with the woman, same as the rose and nightingale presents love classical uh, Eastern literature in various texts written. We can add on those another core value of uh, his poetry is nature and the cities that carried in his poetry from his uh, childhood and younghood, memorized, transformed, reconstructed in poetic language. And another main core theme of his poetry, longing for freedom and peace with an imprisonment, polite angerness, revolt, although it is slightly censored in terms of political utterness. This was also quite brave and respectful, respectful to his own poetic perseverance. Undesirable facts that he burdened in prison 
anti-humanistic impossibleness, unreachableness, uh, but in the end, with the rich imagination to recreate new poetic space and utterance in the mind of the poet, transformed all those handicaps into such happiness as wise and miracle. Uh, as a uh, as a poet uh, can succeed, he is in search of new possibilities in his poetry. Despite his limited access to these sources in writing, we can observe narrativeness fed time to time his freestyle, but never try to lose its music and structure within fluidity. Although sometimes stones can prevent the water riverbed and the voice of water is healing in his poetry, but sometimes his utmost, utmost divine voice is boosting like waterfall into our hearts. Yet he tend to experiment, although slightly in change, tries new forms, giving great hope to readers for his unexpected poetic powers to recreate. Uh, so uh, I wish uh, I would say much more thing on this uh, on his poetry than this, but our limited time only allows me not to go further for this time. But I hope to extend uh, those ideas even further for the next occasion. I hope my words shed light on his poetry even a bit, and uh, thank you for listening me tonight in this meaningful event. And I believe uh, many of us will be also his voice out of prison as solidarity poets outside. Uh, because as, as I always said, uh, sometimes freedom also uh, imprisoned outside too, uh, especially in our minds. In this sense, I have always felt Ilhan is more free than many others outside. I called out prisoners then. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Erkut. So, ich werde jetzt kurz übersetzen. Erkut heißt Sie alle herzlich willkommen und bedankt sich bei den Organisatoren dieser Veranstaltung, dass Sie der Stimme Ilhan Samik Chomaks Gehör verleihen. Erkut hat Chomak durch seine Poesie kennengelernt. Nichts, was mit Politischem zu tun hatte. Sein ehemaliger Verlag Komsu veröffentlichte die berühmte Gedichtsreihe Yaka Mevi in Istanbul. Und Erkuts dritter Gedichtband war in dieser Reihe und der Verlagsleiter schenkte ihm ein Gedichtsband von Ilhan. Und Erkut, immer wenn er ein Buch besonders mag, versucht er persönlichen Kontakt zum Autor aufzunehmen und äh, um die Wertschöpfung auszudrücken und über das Buch zu diskutieren und so auch natürlich mit Ilhan. Und als er den Direktor fragte, wer ihn erreichen könnte, erfuhr er, dass dieser inhaftiert war. Und so begann ihre lange Freundschaft. Äh, wir alle beschreiben es als Wunder, als ein übernatürliches Phänomen. Erkund bezeichnet Ilans Leistung im Gefängnis ähm, so. Er ist wohl der erste kurdisch-türkische Gefangene, der im Gefängnis zum Dichter wurde. Alle seine acht Bücher wurden im Gefängnis geschrieben. In der Türkei wurden über die Jahre hinweg viele Dichter und Schriftsteller politisch inhaftiert, einige längere, einige kürzer und dies ist leider Teil des sogenannten unreifen Demokratierungs Demokratisierungsprozesses des Landes. Viele, insbesondere politische Gefangene, verbringen viel Zeit, lange Zeit im Gefängnis mit Lesen von Büchern, um sich weiterzubilden und intellektuell zu werden, und deshalb nennen manche das Gefängnis in der Türkei auch die autodidaktische Schule. Ilhan ist das beste Beispiel dafür, obwohl er bei jedem Besuch nur sechs Bücher mitgebracht werden dürfen, weiß er gut, dass Ilhan sich über jedes Buch, das ihn durch die Hand Ipex erreicht, unheimlich freut. Die Poesie von Ilhan ist eine Art menschliche Landschaft. Er hat die Seele und das Talent eines großen Dichters. Diese große Seele formt sich in ihm und wenn er entlassen sein wird in der Freiheit, wird er noch so viel mehr Möglichkeiten haben und er gut glaubt, dass seine Poesie explodieren wird. Ähm, oder er wird sie in andere Richtungen ent entwickeln. 
es gibt einige Merkmale, die in all seinen Büchern wieder auftauchen. Ein großer Respekt vor der Menschheit und dem Menschsein, eines der zentralen Themen seiner Poesie. Und in dieser Hinsicht können wir ihn mit Nazim Hikmet vergleichen. Er hat diese Tradition aus Anatolien, seiner Region und von seiner Familie gelernt. Wir können auch beobachten, wie diese Familienwurzeln in seiner Poesie narrativ verarbeitet werden. Die Liebe zur Familie wird zur Mutterliebe oder zur Frauenliebe. Den Wunsch zu lieben und geliebt zu werden, drückt er mit reichen Bildern aus, dem, äh, die aus dem wirklichen Leben stammen, aus der Zeit vor der Gefangenschaft. Die Rose zum Beispiel ist eine seiner Metaphern. Sie steht für die Frau und die Liebe, so wie es in der klassischen östlichen Literatur geschieht. Darüber hinaus hat seine Poesie eine weitere Charakteristik, die Natur und die Städte, auch die aus seiner Kindheit und Jugend. Er transformiert sie in poetische Sprache, sowie die Sehnsucht nach Freiheit und Frieden. Auch Wut und Revolte, zwar etwas zensiert in Bezug auf die politischen Äußerungen, aber das sehr mutig und respektvoll seiner eigenen poetischen Beharrlichkeit gegenüber. All das Furchtbare, das Menschenverachtende, was, im Gefängnis erlebt, was er im Gefängnis erlebt, verwandelt er mit seiner Vorstellungskraft in einen neuen poetischen Raum. Weise und wundersam, wie es nur einem Dichter gelingen kann. Er ist aber auch auf der Suche nach neuen Möglichkeiten in seiner Poesie. Trotz limitiertem Zugang zu schriftlichen Quellen versucht er sich zeitweilig im freien Stil, aber ohne die Musik in der Struktur seiner Worte zu verlieren. Es gibt noch viel zu sagen über seine Poesie, aber die Zeit ist kurz. Erko dankt uns für den heutigen Abend und für diese bedeutende Veranstaltung. Und er glaubt, viele von uns werden Ilhan solidarisch ihre Stimme geben. Manchmal ist die Freiheit auch außerhalb des Gefängnisses eingesperrt, besonders in unseren Köpfen. In diesem Sinne hatte Erkut immer das Gefühl, dass Ilhan freier ist als viele andere von draußen. Nun übergebe ich das Wort an Vivian Fiorentino von Letters with Wings in Irland. Now I give the word to Vivian Fiorentina, Fiorentino, excuse me, from Letters with Wings in Ireland. Good evening, everyone. I start with a poem by Ilan translated by Caroline Stockford. My child, we use the wings of the sea when delaying rains, when the skies cave into my eyes, it's because I worship the blue. My fear is a meaning derived from the wilderness. And yes, I change when I hear the tap, tap of rain. Time come, time go, my sisters, my brothers, of course, my body puts me down. Good evening, everyone. I'm talking tonight on behalf of Letters with Wings. Thanks for inviting Letters with Wings in this important event. Letters with Wings is an initiative of Northern Ireland-based poets. We are Nandi Jola, Chila Toldi, who, are, who is here tonight and we will listen to her later, Maria McManus and myself. Letters with Wings promotes arts and defends the rights of artists worldwide to responsible freedom of expression. In spring 2020, during the first lockdown, we discovered the possibility for an emotional bond with those artists who are kept in prison all over the world for speaking out and, uh, and fighting for human rights. So for Poetry Day Island, we asked the public on Twitter and Facebook to engage with those stories of artists listed on our page <clears throat> and write and post a poetic letter of solidarity. Today was immensely successful. We had more than 8,000 people visiting and interacting with the page. Letters from all over the world were written to 27 artists. So the letters can be uh, read in our website, wingsletters.wordpress.com. I will put the link in the chat. We have already sent letters to Nadine Tufent, Nudem Durak, Dylan Kurdi, 
all Kurdish artists, journalists detained in Turkey. We also sent letters to Stella Nianzi, who has been released but still persecuted. And we are in the process of to send more letters. So please feel free to contact us at Letters with Wings 2020 at gmail.com. If you'd, if you would like to send a letter to Ilan, we will work out through Irish pen and English pen and reach him with your message. We are also collecting donations in order to translate the letters in the languages of the countries where the prisoners are and for and also for sending them. So you will find the donation page in our website. Also in Ireland, where Letter with Wings is based, Irish Pen is running many initiatives in solidarity and in support of Ilan Komak, Tomak. I urge you to visit the Irish Pen website at www.irishpen.com and follow the initiatives. This past Monday, Irish Pen held a Pen Friends writing session supported by Pen International and English Pens and uh, Pen Writers Program by Pen and Norway. Several members joined it in this online event, and we wrote dozens of messages to imprisoned writers all over the world, including Ilan Chomak. There will be more writing sessions in the near future, so please follow Irish Pen or become a member, or you and you will receive further information. Also, Irish Pen curated an edition of the Poetry Jukebox. The Poetry Jukebox are a street installation through, throughout which it is possible to listen to the poetry of, of international imprisoned writers. And this edition includes poems by Ilan. You can listen to this poem of the Jukebox in the SoundCloud, so online, at the link I will put in the chat in a, in a second. Otherwise, check in SoundCloud Poetry Jukebox Quotidian. <clears throat> I will read some of the, uh, of the poems by Ilana, but before uh, these, please let me spend a few words about art and activism. The art express what is to be human in our time and place. And that brings news that not everyone wants to hear news that the certain governments in particular want to suppress. So they bring in censorship, intimidation, vexation, lawsuit, punitive laws. The writing that prisoners continue to do against overwhelming odds is not bitter or negative. It's not about recrimination or hatred. These voices soar, they are free. They rise far above the immediate, the, their immediate circumstances and call us to join them if we dare. Ilan Chomak's mind, his imagination, his words are free. Pen and Norway, Norsh Pen, are running a brilliant campaign for Ilan, which includes people writing poems for him, to which he responds with poems of his own. And uh, I urge tonight, I urge you tonight to visit their page, Pen and Norway, and learn more about this beautiful campaign. And now I leave you with some poems by Ilan. Thank you very much. I came to life. I came to you, life, for Ipek Uze. And the trees shade the buckles, bears give all they know to their wings. The wind blows an ovation and from the sun comes the need to touch. It is this leaves language and sweetness are addressing now that the time for transgress transgressions has come. Yet on the hillside, is always the grace of abstention. Think of the river when you get a chance, flow in vain in water's books. The knots wish to be untied. I'm speaking of the sound of a few colors, 
by denying summer, embrace the spring, and with a few tight steps, forgive me. Forgive this trembling cloud. I came to you with the pain of hands cracked by the mud. I came to you saying, let childhood climb the garden wall again. I came to you with the art of breathing, sleep into morning. Don't pull down my garden wall. Let the path fill with the soft shapes of leaves. Let the road dream of being covered up in grass. There is no city we need to reach. Everything is here. Open the window, open it as the horses whinny on in the wideness of the world. Open it without speaking of the shortness of summer, the never ending winter. Open it that the sky steers with the hiding symbols of my mind. I came to you saying, open the door to the presence of existence as the sky steers in its form. I came to you saying, open the door of becoming, open the door of existence to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Viviana. Thank you. I would say, um, I don't know why Ipek cannot enter, but... Uh, I, I talked to her and the, she says uh, she hasn't received the approval of her res registration. So maybe she needed the link uh, because uh, approval email, there is a link. Uh, when you click on the link, uh, you can enter in. She doesn't uh, didn't receive this email at all from the beginning. First registration. I'm in touch with her, Erkut. I'm I'm in touch with her. I'm I, we exchanged correspondence at least half a dozen times. Hopefully she'll Maybe be able there was to get something in. Wrong in the system, Don. Uh, so. It's uh, possible. I don't know. She's very upset. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, maybe I would know. say I will read the German translation, which I have here. So at least part of our yeah. public uh, get, okay. gets more information about Ilhan. Ipek bedankt sich für diese Veranstaltung zu Ehren von Ilhan Samitschomak. Als sie ihm heute sagte, dass er Mittelpunkt der Veranstaltung wäre, war er sehr aufgeregt und möchte sich ganz herzlich bei uns allen bedanken. Ilan Samit Schomak wurde 1994 im Alter von 22 Jahren festgenommen und sitzt seit 28 Jahren hinter Gittern. Ilans Fall ist nicht nur im türkischen Maßstab wirklich legendär, sondern in der Rechtsgeschichte weltweit. Er wurde zweimal vor Gericht gestellt, einmal von einem Militärgericht und nach der Entscheidung des Europäischen Gerichtshofs noch einmal vor ein Zivilgericht aber es hat nichts geändert. Der ganze Prozess dauerte 22 Jahre, unglaublich, und er wurde zweimal zu lebenslanger Haftstrafe für Verbrechen ver äh, ver verurteilt, die er nicht nur nie begangen hat die, und die vor Gericht nie nachgewiesen werden konnten. So hat er 28 Jahre, Jahre in schweren Sicherheitsgefängnissen verbracht, sein Leben wurde ihm gnadenlos gestohlen. Er verbrachte mehr Zeit seines Lebens im Gefängnis als draußen. Aber das bisschen, was er vom Leben haben konnte, verschönerte er und entwickelte mit seiner Kraft, Fantasie, seinem Optimismus eine Poesie. In dieser Hinsicht ist er wirklich ein Wunder. Bis heute wurden acht Bücher seiner Poesie veröffentlicht und ein neues kommt nächsten Monat heraus. Er hat viele Essays, die in Zeitschriften und Zeitungen veröffentlicht wurden, geschrieben und seine Autobiografie, die jetzt schon in der vierten Auflage ist. Wenn man seine Schriften liest, kann man Zeuge werden seiner Liebe, Lust und des Optimismus, die er in sich trägt. Unsere Stimmen, die heute Ilan Gehör verschaffen, werden ihn bestärken und den Mut zum Durchhalten geben. So. Nun würde ich sagen, ähm, wird Gino weitermachen. Das ist das okay, Gino?
Dinot? Hast du dein Mikrofon an? Mikrofon habe ich jetzt. Mein Mikrofon habe ich jetzt an. Hört, hört man mich? Antje, hört man mich? Ja. Okay. Ja, ähm, schönen Dank und uh, hello to everybody, everybody and uh, I will read two uh, poems uh, that I translated from the English language uh, and uh, to German. Heute Morgen. Heute Morgen schaue ich dich an. Schneide die Trauerweide zurück, Knospen zittern und lechzen zum Treiben. Ich schaue dich an, streue meine eigene Asche aus und gehe hinaus. Füge noch Licht der Sonne hinzu und schreite auf Saaten. Die Welt fällt auf mich herab. Auf Zehenspitzen bringt die Stille die Harmonie zurück. Schulter an Schulter mit dem Regen stehe ich im aufziehenden Geruch der Erde auf dem Hügel. Nebenbei bleiben einige Worte unausgesprochen. Ich tauche ein in das Geheimnis des Gebets, lache ein wenig und klammere mich an eine sich ausbreitende Brise, wie hoch die Wolken sind. Die Wurzeln schauen zur Erde. Ich schaue auf dich und Kämme mein Haar. Ich setze mein Merkmal an den entlegensten Fleck, spüre die Resonanz des Schmerzes, die Reflexion des Spiegels. Die Nacht ist nackt. Flammen warten ungeduldig zu lodern. Nur ein paar Atemzüge bleiben mir noch. Mein Körper ist müde. Aus plötzlicher Stille steigt Asche auf. Die Welt fällt auf mich herab. Das zweite Gedicht hat den Titel Aus diesem Grund. Um die Resonanz eines Briefes im Raum zwischen uns und der Sonne zu zeigen, habe ich mir ins Gesicht geschnitten. Ich befahl dem müden Gesicht der Rebellion, lachen. Ich bin jetzt mit ihr versöhnt, wie wenn man eine Skizze gezeichnet hat und sich fragt, ein Apfel, eine Birne oder eine Aprikose? Es ist eine Pflaume, sage ich mit warmem Ton, dem Ton einer Pause. Blutsbrüderschaft war weit und ist verschlossen. Mir fließt das Blut aus allen Wunden. Mein Schädel brummt vom Sammeln von Geräuschen der Nacht. Hört mich gut an. Hört mich jetzt an. Ich bin die Liebe der Blumen. Überquere den Nil und die arabischen Dünen. Wenn Tigris und Euphrat mich aufhalten, ist es Blut. Auch der Geschmack hat einen Namen. Schreiben meinen als 
ein Auge, wie ein Wachmann. Gehen ist Poesie, Prosa, der Weg. Ich könnte meines Vaters Bruder sein und ein Amulett aus Schmerzen tragen. Vielen Dank. Vielen, vielen Dank. Thank you very much, Gino, for this wonderful translations and this wonderful reading. This was very, thank, very thank, profound. Thank you. thank you very much. Vielen Dank. Thank you. My pleasure. Gino, thank you. Für diese wunderbare Interpretation deiner selbst übersetzten Gedichte. Jetzt würde ich uh, Erkut aufrufen. Erkut, can you read two poems in Turkish? Yes, yes, sure. Hand? Yes, I choose uh, two poems uh, for you. Uh, one from the uh, Dichlenin Günlü. Uh, the Diary of Dichle is a river uh, on the eastern uh, part of the Turkey. So uh, as I told you in my uh, speech also, uh, his family roots reflects on his poetry as narratively uh structured in his poetry uh, and i will read a, a poem dedicated to his father aklımda ilk kalan şey çok güzeldi annemin gölgesi uzundu babam bol güneşli bir tatildi az gidilen ben bir çocuktum bingöl sokaklarında göğe kenarından bakar arkadaş devşirirdim adını Yeni diyen. Bazen karanlık günlerim olunca dedem beni kucağına alırdı. Yalnızlık gül kokardı. Bağır kendi adıyla vardı. Sabahlar inanılmaz bir gökyüzü. İnsan adam gibi yürür. Denizine konuşan aynalara sır saklardı. Erkekler kabuk bağlar en ince yerinden. Korkulardan güzel kadınlar yaparlardı. Ağaçlar geçmişini inkar etseler de aşıyla, kuşlar öyle güzel bir cıvıltı. Ben her ölüm sonrası cami kapılarında yıldız arardım. Gitmek yüzlü babalar Almanya olurdu. Anneler bu hasretle kendilerini yakar, her sözde evlere hızır getirirlerdi. Irmak kenarları vardı bize yasak. Ben kendim sevdim bu yasağı. O zamanlar bahar, top, koşmak, bir de iyi saklanmaktı akşam al alacasında. Nereden geliyor demeden, bütün rüyalar benimdi. Günler kısa, yaşamak çok güzeldi. Babam bana oğlum diyordu. Ben bunu çok seviyordum. Gecelerden uzaktım, atlara tutkun. Yalnız sevmek yorardı beni, az konuşurdum. Kısa boylu heveslerim vardı. Sıra dağlar, günahıma akan ırmak olur. Kuşlar vurulunca ben anneme dönerdim. Ağır başlı ağlayışlarımı zor sığdırırdım koynuna. Amcam bir eski uzun havaydı, inceden ince. Bense onu her gördüğümde sesini çalardım bütün banyolarıma. Babam aslında pir titremesiydi sevdayla. Çok da ağlardı sema her duruşunda. Bendeki yaralar Yalnızlığının duyulan sesi. Aklımda kalan, aklımda son kalan şey çok güzeldi. Babam bana oğlum diyordu ve ben onu çok seviyordum. Evet, this is the first one and I read now the second one. Gidelim. Bu mumların kırmızı, mor, sarı, alev diliyle Kösnül ve hızlı adımlarla hadi. Siyahın içinden ışık hızının korkunç geğirtili, geğirtileriyle gidelim. Uzun bir çakal sesiyle çalkalanıyor gece. Unutkan ve harlı pişmanlıklarla yontuyor. Uçurumun karanlıklarını yalan. Dünyanın içinde kelimeler yarılıyor. Toprak bereketiyle kırbaçlıyor. Bağda bostanda. Kırbaçlıyor en çok kapkara ellerimi. Uzun ve esmer bir cümle kopuyor ağzımdan. Bir gün belki, bir gün en eski 
Bir gün kocaman adımlarla sana geldim. Dip gizli ve muson yağmurlarıyla bir fay bıraktım. Bir gün gidelim. Tuttum hafif bir sis gibi çöktüm denize. Caddeleri ayaklarımın hengamesiyle hırpaladım. Dağıldı isminin harcı. Devrik bir zeburla yaşardı aklım. Uzun bir mezmur, uzun bir me mersiye, uzun, bıçkın ve uykusuz. Gidelim. Senden söz edeceğiz. Önce hayatın dilini kuşanarak. İnanacağız mesela vaktin tamsa. Günün o kabarık sesine yağmur beklerken salkımlar, şarkılar, taşın aralanan dudakları. İş bu hadi. Sen meçhul, ben meçhul. Sevişelim. Bir çıkmaz sokak mayalanıyor belki her adımda. Dağ çoğalıyor. Deniz kupkuru. Ormanlar eh işte. Beni bir kenara bırakma. Tarazla ufku. Yuhalayarak geç. Tükür tükürebildiğin kadar kovulduğunda. İncinen bir esmerlikle gidelim. Çünkü senden korkuyorum. O çocuk yüzünün bahçelerinde susan rüzgarlardan. Dalgalanan saçların çağın yaprağıyla gölgeleniyor. Mayalanan süt, süt bereketli. Buğday, aç tavuk, mısır. Gidelim. Ezberledim demirin sonsuz inadını. Kır kapıyı, sarkacı al. Gövdeme işlenmiş tırnak izlerinden öğren zamanı. Gidelim. Thank you very much for listening to poems in Turkish. Thank you very much. Yeah, good. This was very important I, to hear the poems yeah. in Turkish too. To uh, I'm idea. looking forward also the listening uh, poems in Kurdish, uh, if we can hear uh, translations. Maybe not today, but in another time. Yes, I think we absolutely should. Um, I saw that Ipek Etzel arrived. That's very nice. Ipek, welcome. Um, I already read the German translation, so please do your introduction in Turkish and English. Okay, thank you. First of all, let me speak in English. No, if it is to speak about Ilhan or prison, I can talk for hours actually. But when I see the program, I am only allowed for I think four minutes for both Turkish and English translation. Um, first of all, let me thank you all uh, for being here today and for organizing this event. But also when I saw Ilhan two weeks ago, He told me that I should not forget to thank on behalf of him, not only to the organizing committee here or all the people here, but to Margaret Owen, who first started his campaign in Europe. Because if it was Margaret uh, whom I met first and told Ilhan's story, and uh, she was just uh, one night before a long trip, but she took me very seriously She listened to the whole story. She trusted in my words, and she traveled all the way to Istanbul to witness Ilhan's trial. So she is the one who started all the international conversation. And also, I shouldn't forget to thank to Caroline Stockford, uh, who translated Ilhan mostly in uh, English, and also who made all these platforms possible for us. Uh, to meet all the friends of Ilhan to talk to you. So thank you all. And I do this thanks on behalf of Ilhan and he sent lots so hello to you all. And uh, Ilhan is the longest serving student prisoner in Turkey, unfortunately. He has been in prison for the last 28 years. Uh, and he was put in prison only when he was 22. When you think like this, He spent all his 20s, all his 30s, all his 40s, unfortunately, in a heavy security prison. And uh, when we put things together like this, um, we can see, which is the most touching part for me, that he spent most time in the prison than outside the prison. Because he was only 22 and say that he starts realizing the world after 10, 11, I don't know, maybe 30. It was only a very short time. 
outside, witnessing the life outside, but more time, which is 28 years in prison. Now, putting him in prison, imprisoning him, uh, they stole his freedom, obviously, but not only his freedom, but also they stole his chances of experiencing life as we do in every day. His chances of education, his chances of making a family, his chances of falling in love, his chances of making his children, all the things. But um, the thing is that uh, I can say it from the deep of my heart and witnessing him for a long, long years that they couldn't manage to stall his imagination. They couldn't manage to stall uh, his dreams. They couldn't manage to stall his hopes. They couldn't manage to stall the love, the kindness, the elegance inside him. And they couldn't manage to stall his warm and beautiful smile. So uh, no authority, no court, um, no torture could manage to stop Ilhan speaking the words of love, speaking the words of elegance, speaking the words of uh, art. Uh, and um, when we talk, when we think about it again like that, imagine the years outside the prison, he could only accumulate very little. He could only uh, get very little out of life because the days outside the prison was very short. He could only collect very little memories outside uh, when he was outside. But what he did was to develop them with his imagination. He embellished what he has got uh, into a beautiful world of poetry. And now you are also listening some of it. Um, but I think like this, uh, Ilhan is, I think, uh, a miracle. Uh, because imagine all the years in, all the tortures you face, all the uh, bad, bad, bad conditions of being a political prisoner in Turkey, being in a heavy security prison, still, if you follow his words, then you will follow his footsteps of his mind and his imagination. Then you see the love in his poetry. You see the lust for life. You see the beauty of uh, nature in his poetry. So in this sense, he is a miracle. Also, uh, I, I must save some time for the Turkish, so I, I want to say a little bit more about in English. When I saw him two weeks ago, uh, I told him that, uh, I told him about this event. And also I, in all our encounters, uh, whenever we see, we talk to each other, he asks me about all the details, uh, all these things, all the details of the, organizations made for him, all the details, all the uh, writings about him. And I make sure that I don't forget any detail. So I bring him all the details inside. I bring him all the messages, messages sent to him, all the praise made for him, all the good wishes make, made for him. And he listens to me very carefully. He questions, it's the difficult thing to tell Ilhan everything within 45 minutes of visitation because he gets even, he wants to get even more details. Uh, and then he stops and he, told, he says like this, two weeks ago, this was his message that he said, oh, if it is like this, it means that despite all the isolation, all the loneliness I had in the prison for 28 years, I have a huge family of friends outside. I have huge uh, people waiting for me outside. So I will be strong and I will keep myself up. I will not let prison to put me down. And I will walk out of these doors after three years, strong, uh, joyful, optimistic, and I want to, I will meet everybody and shake hands with everybody. So everybody wait for him. He will be here uh, after three uh, years. Uh, and sometimes uh, when we do things like this, um, we say, okay, we do something 
for somebody we don't know. We do it with all our goodwill and we do it from the depths of our hearts, but is it appreciated? So uh, I just want to also underline it, highlight it that yes, whatever you do for Ilhan to raise his voice, to send a simple tweet, just to think about him in your mind, in your heart, it is fully appreciated and all the things done outside for him is accumulated and becomes a huge, big bond of love to, love to life. So also this is miracle. Thank you very much for being all here. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Yipek. Now it's shortly in Turkish, I want to say. Yes, shortly. Herkese çok teşekkürler. Konu İlhan ve cezaevi olduğu zaman ben saatlerce konuşabilirim. Ama programa baktım ki sadece dört dakikam var konuşmak için. Kısaca şunu söylemek istiyorum. İlhan cezaevindeki en uzun süre kalan öğrenci mahpustu. Çünkü o içeri alındığı zaman 22 yaşındaydı ve üniversite öğrencisiydi. Ve şu anda 28 senedir cezaevinde. Şimdi böyle baktığımız zaman İlhan bütün 20'li yaşlarını, 30'lu yaşlarını, 40'lu yaşlarını cezaevinde geçirdi. Ve çok açık ki, bunu açıkça görüyoruz ki İlhan'ın dışarıda yaşadığı, yaşadığı yıllardan çok daha fazlası yüksek güvenlik ve cezaevlerinde içeride geçti. Bu müthiş bir trajedi. Uğradığı bütün hapsızlıklar, bütün hukuksuzlukları bir tarafa koyarsak sadece bir insanın dışarıda yaşadığından çok daha uzun bir süre içeride yaşamış olması bile büyük bir trajedi. Ama öte taraftan her trajedinin içinden e, belki de görebileceğimiz bir iyimserlik çıkıyor. Evet İlhan'a çok işkence yaptılar. İlhan'ı çok haksız şekilde yargıladılar. E, asla adalet yerini bulmadı. Ve gerçekten hak etmediği bir yaşamı yaşadı 28 senedir. Ama hiçbir güç, hiçbir işkence, hiçbir mahkeme, hiçbir dava, hiçbir kötülük, hiçbir hakim İlhan'ın içindeki iyiliği alamadı. İlhan'ın e, içindeki iyimserliği, nezaketi, düşünceliliği alamadı. Ve en önemlisi İlhan'ın o güzelin gülümsemesini alamadı. Böyle baktığımız zaman İlhan gerçekten bir mucizedir. İlhan'ın şiirlerini burada bir kısmını dinledik. Yayınlanmış sekiz tane şiir kitabı var. Otobiyografisi var. Şimdi dördüncü baskıya gidiyor otobiyografide. Bunların hepsini okuduğumuz zaman İlhan'ın zihninin adımlarını, ayak izlerini görebiliriz. Ve şunu çok rahatlıkla söyleyebiliriz ki aslında dışarıda güzel bir şeyler biriktirmek için olan zamanı ne kadar kısa olsa da e, güzel hatıralar biriktirmek için zamanı, iyi şeyler biriktirmek için zamanı çok kısa olsa da e, İlhan'ın içinde o, o topladıkları hayattan küçük şeyleri o, o kadar büyüttü, o kadar zenginleştirdi, o kadar genişletti ve o kadar muhteşem bir şiire çevirdi ki bu anlamda ben İlhan'ın bir mucize olduğunu düşünüyorum. Bir de son olarak şunu söylemek istiyorum. İlhan'ı 15 gün önce gördüm. Gayet iyi ve gayet güçlüydü. Ben onunla işte iki defa ayda görüş var. E, bu görüşlere gidiyorum. E, ve onunla 45 dakika geçiriyoruz. E, ve her 45 dakikada bir çok çok kıymetli, çok ilham dolu, çok e, mutluluk dolu. Hem benim için hem onun için bunu biliyorum. E, bütün detayları bana soruyor her şeyle ilgili. Ve ona anlatıyorum. Lütfen sizler de emin olun ki sizlerden gelen bütün selamları, bütün iyi niyetleri, bütün duaları... İlhan için yapılan etkinlikleri, organizasyonları, onun için yazılan bütün yazıları, bütün detaylarıyla onu anlatıyorum. 15 gün evvel bu konuşmayı yaptığımız zaman İlhan durdu şöyle dedi bana. Hı, bu o zaman gerçek mucize budur dedi. Çünkü ben dedi 28 senedir cezaevindeyim. 28 senedir kahrolası bir yalnızlığa mahkum edildim. 28 senedir izole bir hayat yaşıyorum. Ama dışarıda senin anlattıklarını anladığım kadarıyla beni bekleyen Kocaman bir dünya var, dostlar var ee, ve bu benim ayakta durmam için, güçlü olmam için müthiş bir enerji. Bunu özellikle sizlere söylemek istiyorum. Çünkü bu tarz işlerle uğraşan insanlar, bizler bazen şöyle bir e, yılgınlığa düşebiliyoruz. Tamam biz bunları yapıyoruz da bu ulaşıyor mu? Veya bir işe yarıyor mu? Yani karşı karşıya olduğumuz kötülük o kadar büyük ki bu kadar kötülük karşısında bu yaptıklarımızın bir anlamı var mı? 
Evet İlhan tarafından bunu açıklıkla söyleyebilirim ki yaptığımız her şey, onun için yolladığımız her tweet, onun okuduğumuz her mısra şiirinden, hatta dışarıya bir işaret vermeden, onu zihnimizden, aklımızdan geçirdiğimiz her an, ona güzel enerjilerimizi gönderdiğimiz her an İlhan'a büyük bir sevgi, büyük bir dayanıklılık ve büyük bir güç olarak dönüyor. Bunu size söylemek istiyorum ve bunu da İlhan kendisi bir mucizedir diye söylüyor. Çok teşekkür ediyorum. Lafı uzattıysam da özür diliyorum. Thank you. Şükran İpek. Thank you very much. <gülüyor> very good. Thank so much enthusiasm. I'm sorry, That's very I'm sorry good. if I talk too much. No, don't worry. It's <gülüyor> important. You gave all the information. Uh, we gave the information in three languages. Oh, so you. now I want to pass to Sila Tolli from Let Us With Wings to read some more poems in English. Okay. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay. I would like to start with the poem that uh, Gino read in, in German. And this one is in Caroline Stockford's translation into English. It's for this reason. It's for this reason I slashed my face by placing the resonance of a letter in the space between us and the sun. Laugh, I said to the tired face of rebellion. I'm reconciled with this matter now. You know, like drawing a sketch and then staring, asking, is it an apple, pear, or apricot? Saying it's a plum in that tone that's almost warm, the tone of a pose. Blood's brotherhood was so far away and stopped. Blood that pours from all wounds and flows to me. My skull splits from storing up nights every sound. Hear me well, hear me now. I, who am the love of all the flowers, I cross the Nile, I cross the Arab sands. If the Tigris and Euphrates detain me, it's blood, you know, even taste has a name. Write my name like an eye as a watchman, because the going is poetry, prose is the road. And I would be a brother to my father, carrying pain on my body like an amulet. The next poem is Life Does Not Lie for Michael Baron. I am between the moon and the tide between the whisper and the scream. When I was a child, had still the script of a child, when I was hostage to my mother's pomegranate smile, when I looked from the window to the full light of the garden, watching the practical philosophy of hands plucking the fruit tree. In those times when we still heard the sound of frogs, when women passed through my life and the lake was blue, when I knew the value of blue. I understand there is pain too on the steps of life. On the day of existence, the wind rose up to meet me. Resistance like dew on the grass met my feet. Ripe fires grew across my body and doves my feelings were met by the rustle of their wings. In spring's demeanor, I hear the sounds of cleaning. I hear footsteps of plains and mountains and the low of snow melting. Earth grows damp in my memory. Fruit ripens. Stone's habitual weight grows light makes it to flow and tremble as it wishes. In my place between trouble and well-being, I hear the song of happiness from the world. As goodwill blossoms, life does not lie. I say it doesn't lie. 
And um, another poem, let us not speak. Let us not speak so much, I say. Let us laugh, leaping the fences of this mistrust. The wind is blowing, wind is blowing. Let us whisper into each other's ears, into your ears. In the river's secret places, in the tender shade of, our, of rushes, in the composite of mud bricks, as the whole city sleeps, let us speak little in a corner the light can't reach. There is belief between us and the dryness of a thirsting mouth. Let us sit, pour out the pictures in our heads on the surface of the water. Let us love the carnation as it says, my confession is red. Falcons fly to the world's most lonely height. Let us open our windows to the fluid beauty of butterflies. With the art of feeling, let us hear the hearts rushing. I will sing songs and throw stones like I used to. I will ride horses and recite poetry. Here there is a depth and here a fire. Here lies a word unspoken. Let the doves cool, but let us not speak. Thank you very much. Thank Sheila. you. I would like to add that, uh, as, as Viviana uh, mentioned, we had this uh, session with Irish uh, Pen on Monday, and I, I responded to a, a poem of Ilhan, which was uh, actually written to John Macker. I found it on the website of, of uh, Pen Norway. And he says, Ilha, Ilhan says, I say the blossoms of the fir first cherry tree breaking into air. How do they smell? Can you tell me this and what their color is? I seem to have forgotten. And my answer to this is the first blossoms of the cherry tree smell of mother snow. Fresh and fluffy, marshmallow, frozen rays, rain that sneaks into your lungs cleansing, bringing light. And I would encourage everybody to, to write to Il Ilan because as we heard, he really appreciates every positive thought. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sila. So now we come to the conclusion and Liman will close this evening. And afterwards, we open up the mic to our public, which is with us on the Zoom, who wants to say short things, please write in the chat so I can call you after we close the official event. Okay? So, um, wir werden jetzt das, die, das Event beenden mit Le Mann, mit einem musikalischen Beitrag. Danach werden wir das Mikrofon öffnen für unsere Gäste, die mit uns hier auf, dem Zoom, auf der Zoom-Plattform sind. Wer etwas sagen möchte, etwas Kurzes, kann sich in der Chatline melden und ich werde ihn dann aufrufen. Gut, also Le Mann. Ja, ein Teil aus dem Gedicht Lektionen des Regens. Letztendlich kamen die Tauben und landeten auf meiner Zunge. Das sahen wir mit Dankbarkeit bis in die Sackgassen meines Herzens. Ich habe die wilden Zähne des Morgens versteckt und die Wüsten zogen weiter mit den Trommeln des Sandes. Mein Mund ist verwundert.
bis in die letzten Winkel. Und mein Mund ist ein Meister. Und ich schließe mich dir an. Lieder für dich zu singen. bis zum Grund eines Regens, welches ihr langes, zitterndes Haar ist, das meine Haut berührt. Ich trockne wie Worte, mit sprudelnden Wellen zu den langen Sätzen des steigenden Meeres. Merke dir diese Steine, denk langsam an mich. Zu den gewundenen Füßen der Flüsse hin sage ich, komm du, sage ich zu meiner Seele. Schließe Fenster und Tür und komm. Ich sagte, ich zähle bis zehn, überquere die Lichter, wild schwingend deinen Rock mit den ältesten Wörtern, die die Schreibregeln brechend zu meiner Seele, mein Leben, du. Komm, es regnet. Ich sagte, werde nicht nass. Beim Schwingen deiner Hüften stürzen sich Zigeuner auf die Straße. Dein Haar trägt die Kühle der nassen Vorhöfe, sagte ich diesen Jungen und derer gebrannten Haut. Sie erheben ihre Hand zum Leben. Halbiere den Apfel, hör auf zu rauchen. Treten Sie nicht auf die Mondblume. Ich sagte vorwärts meinem Herz und mit unerfahrenem Wasser zu deinen geschnittenen Adern. Im Dunst der Wahrsagung, in Härte schauernde die Augen. deiner unaufgeräumten, zappeligen Meisterschaft versucht, kalt mit meiner Schamhaftigkeit schüchtern. Vielen Dank, Lemon. Thank you very much. This was very, very beautiful. Very wonderful. Um, so, gibt es jemanden, der gerne noch was dazu sagen möchte zu diesem Event? Hier auf der Liste hat sich keiner eingetragen. Somebody wants to say something about the event, about Ilham, about the situation or whatever. This is a chance to speak. Nobody. You're all satisfied. Okay. 
So then I want to thank all the participants. I, I want to Eat. say something before we close. Do we want to close now, really? Yes, we are closing now. We are already oh, over so, our time. So I really want to say something before we close. Good. Yes. Um, ich würde erst einmal in Deutsch sprechen. Um, or I try to say it in English first, maybe it's better. Um, I think that nobody um, will be not touching by heart when they know what happened with uh, Ilhan. And Ilhan is not the only one. Ilhan is really with so many years a person which touches very deeply in that moment when you hear this 28 years. But there are so, so many other people too. They are in prison in Turkey over so many, many years and they are also um, not guilty. We know that there are so many political prisoners and I want to say from here my solidarity and my greetings to all of them. And I think it is very important that uh, when we take one destiny, so that we see that it is a political thing what happened and that there are over thousands of people are political prisoners in Turkey and that we have, um, yes, to support the human rights in Turkey and uh, be in solidarity with all of them. I think uh, it's uh, also for somebody like Ilhan, um, he's so um, sensitive that he won't, uh, I think he will be happy to hear that we are in solidarity with all the others and that we think of them also today here. And, um, also, it is for me, I said at the beginning, uh, important to say that it is um, that I promise I want to help to translate also in, uh, in Kurdish language the poems and um, want to share it. Um, that's what I want to say. This is for me very important. And in the way of translation, one thing I want to say it is sometimes not the, the usual way you use the language maybe when I translate it in German. Um, but I don't did it in that way because I didn't know the useful language and the kind how you can translate it. I did it in that way because um, I think I have to put uh, the integration is has to be in a transcultural way. Every dialogue need to be open for new and it is always a chance to open the mind and uh, to let the language grow by a dialogue and translation with the other language. Um, before I will, um, in, in Turkish, um, they, there is no sister and brother. They say just kardesh. And uh, for example, Nazim Hikmet's uh, words, um, our wish uh, to unsere Sehnsucht einzeln und frei wie ein Baum und wie ein Wald geschwisterlich, sage ich zum Beispiel in der Übersetzung. Aber bei vielen Übersetzungen wird immer von brüderlich gesprochen. Uh, when they translate Nazim Hikmet, 
they always translate it in uh, that they are um, to be free as a tree and to be in brotherhood like a wood. But um, in German, there's also a word for sisters and brothers. You can take it for both and it is much more near Turkish uh, in that way. So I use it with Geschwisterlich and not brotherhood. Um, things like that. I think it is very important that we um, use sometimes not the usual language we use uh, when we translate, that we can be a little bit uh, sensitive and put uh, much more of the um, of the way how it is said uh, written in the original form. Uh, maybe it is a little bit foreign when it is translate, but if it is okay for the language, we can use it, even if it is not the normal way to do it. Um, mit zwei Sätzen nur in Deutsch, ich möchte es nicht sprengen. Uh, mir ist es wichtig, dass bei einer Übersetzung uh, wird oftmals, uh, sage ich mal, sehr die, auf, darauf geachtet, dass es wirklich ganz geschmeidig in der übersetzten Sprache dann auch uh, in der gängigen uh, Form übersetzt ist. Ich weiß, dass dieser Anspruch oftmals besteht, um, aber ich denke auch, dass äh, es oftmals auch äh, sinnvoll sein kann und eine Chance in sich birgt, bei einer Übersetzung äh, auch äh, eine blumigere Sprache aus dem Original oder auch die Rede, äh, auch die Satzstellungen in einer vielleicht etwas komplizierteren Weise trotzdem mitzunehmen, weil ähm, ja, man doch auch ein Gespür für die andere Sprache dann entwickeln kann. Und ähm, es nicht gänzlich schwindet. Also eine Trans, äh, die Begegnung und die Integration einer, eines Gedichts in die andere Sprache sollte immer auch ähm, offen sein für die Begegnung des Fremdvorkommenden aus der anderen Originalsprache. Diese Offenheit wünsche ich mir in einer transkulturellen Begegnung. Danke. Danke, Limmern. Ähm, möchte noch jemand was sagen? Deborah, glaube ich, wollte auch irgendwie noch einen Beitrag bringen, wenn ich richtig erinnere. Kann das sein? Gibt es noch jemanden? Nazim, möchtest du gerne ja, was sagen? Äh, wenn das möglich ist, möchte ich kurz was sagen. Ja, natürlich. Äh, super. Ich möchte mich erst äh, äh, für diese Möglichkeit oder solche Dinge äh, mich bei Male bedanken, besonders für IPEC oder Erkut äh, sowas gemacht haben, möchte ich mich und bedanken für auch beim Alle. Äh, das ist äh, sehr schön und das ist großartig, finde ich auch, äh, dieser Abend äh, besonders deutschsprachig Bilanzgedichte zu hören, auch Musik war wunderschön, Berührung. Und ich möchte auch äh, Ilhans Name und meine Familienname, auch mein Name, mich herzlich bedanken. Und das ist sehr schön, auch äh, habe ich auch gelesen, dass da bald wieder Ilhans Gedichte oder äh, seine Bücher auf Deutsch äh, erschienen wird. Äh, das wäre großartig, weil meine Tochter ist 17, sie kann kein Deutsch, äh, Türkisch. Und entweder Englisch oder Deutsch, sie wollte unbedingt äh, und fragt nach immer, Papa, wann erschienen Onkel äh, Bücher? Ich möchte endlich was, was lesen und ich möchte auch äh, sich heute überrasch, äh, überraschen, ist sagen, dass da bald äh, das verwirklicht, äh, verwirklicht wird. Das ist auch sehr schön und ja, das, ich kann dann äh, kurz das sagen, das war sehr schön. Und ich möchte mich noch mal bedanken. Äh, das ich kann nur das sagen. Vielen, vielen Dank. Ja, danke. Ja, ich bedanke mich auch bei allen Teilnehmern. Also Ibeck Ötzel, Erkut Tokman, 
von Better Letters of Wings, Vivian Fiorentino, Silvia Toldi, Gino Leineweber von Deutschen Pen und natürlich bei Don Krieger, der uns diese oh. Möglichkeit gegeben hat auf dieser Plattform und ein ganz großes Dankeschön für den musikalischen Beitrag von Lehmann Stehen. Das war das ganz besonders. Das war sehr geschehen. Und I want to thank everybody who was with us on the Zoom meeting and I hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye bye. We also thank, thank you to you, Anche Anche for all your all efforts. Thank you everybody. It was wonderful to be here. Thank you very much.